got started. There, you go. <laughs> there we go. Hi. Sorry. Said hello way before uh, I should have done then. Drew's like nodded at me and I was like, oh, no, no it's not started. <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys and girls. How are you all doing? Um, oh, I tell you what, we're a little bit run off our feet today. It's absolutely flipping crazy. Even more crazier than it has been the last couple of weeks. It's been like proper today. Um, which is fun. It's all good fun. It's still sticking a smile on her face. We're going to regret it later, but the sun's out and there will be a gin and tonic or seven later. <laughs> so, um, we're going to do some red work today, but we've got the raffle to do first because that's all finished. So we will do another one as well. But, um, yeah, so we're going to do the raffle first. Who's coming online? Who's there, guys? Anybody? Uh, we've got Catherine, we've got Anne, we've got Jan, Lisa, Sheila, Meg. Ah, oh, fab. Mickey. Lovely. Lots and lots of you. Hi, guys. Hello, everybody. Um, right. I'm going to take a breath. Chill down a little bit. Because I've been running around like an idiot all morning. <laughs> so, raffle prize. All filled up. It was the lucky numbers one. Um, I'm just going to go through again what, what you got, um, what you'll win if, you, if you're the lucky number. Um, so, as per usual, you've got a metre of wadding. Anne Davis, I'm really sorry, I only just remembered, um, I've packed it up this morning, it'll go in the post today, okay, I'll get your meter out to you. I forgot to put it in the box, we put all the goodies in, I forgot to give her the box, uh, the wadding. So I did suddenly remember this morning, so I packed it all up and that will be on its way to you. Um, so you get a meter of wadding, 80-20 wadding, and you get five meters of fabric of your choice, okay. Uh, that does include Liberty Fabric, I'm afraid, um, but anything else in the shop. And then you get some flower head pins. You get a rotary cutter. Well, the blade, obviously. You get some Schmetz needles. Uh, we've got a Moda jelly roll and a Moda charm pack. Okay. You've got 20 moon threads. I'm not going to open the box because it's all nice and sealed. But you've got 20 moon threads in there. All rainbow of colours. So everything you could need. You've got a Liberty fat. Um, Liberty bundle, fabric bundle, and you've got six half meters in there, so there's a huge chunk of Liberty fabric. You've got one of our lovely, lovely take notebooks, um, which I just love these, I use these all the time, they're fabulous. You've got one of our quilt to go packs, one of our white gecko rulers, which are the two and a half inch ones. We've got a pattern, and we've got the gradients, a new gradients panel. Okay, there's a different one there now. So, that's everything. Massive, massive bundle. Lots and lots of goodies for you to play with. So, let's go for it. Let's do this one. Right, let's move all out of the way. Okay, Drew, nice and close up on this one for me, please. So you can see they're all filled out. Let's get my nail under here. Come on. Let's pick away, pick away. Come on. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Somebody... I need a little drum roll music app, don't I? Oh gosh, this one doesn't want to come. <laughs> right, <laughs> it doesn't want to move. As you can see, they are very, very well stuck down. Oh, hang on, there we go. It's lifting, it's lifting. There we go. Okay, it is number 23. 23, that is Rachel Baker. Rachel Baker, congratulations. Well done. I will give you a call, hopefully put your number on the, the website, give you a call once we're all done and all this lovely bundle of goodies is coming to, to you, okay? So yeah, number 23, Rachel Baker, well done. Right, okie doke, I'm going to put all this back in the bag. Talk to me ladies while I'm packing away, what are you all up to? How, who's there? Who's saying anything? Oh, we've got Suzanne, we've got Simon Biggs joined us today. Hi Simon. Uh, we've got Christine saying hello. Fab. Heidi as well, and Wendy. Oh, lovely. Lots and lots of you on today. Cool. Um, um, we'll do another raffle. We will do, put another one on. Um, we'll get that on probably to start again on Sunday. Um, so, yeah, if, you're, uh, if you still want to have a play, if you still want to have a go, we can do that for you, okay? Right, that one's all out of the way. Rachel Baker, well done. Fab, right. A nice little bit of gentleness now, nice little bit of red work. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the panels we've got and also how you can turn, excuse me, just on my bra strap, <laughs> um, and also how you can turn um, basically any image into a red work um, design. Okay, so um, we you can use embroidery silks for them, but um, most people would use either cotton perlay 
which are these lovely ones, a number eight, okay? Or something called cotton embroidery, which looks like, um, like your standard embroidery silks, but you don't split them, you use them. They're, they're slightly thinner, and you know normally you, you pull off your strands, don't you, for like doing your blanket stitch or, or embroidery. This you don't, you use it as a single thread, okay? So it is quite thick, and we do do these in a range of colors, okay? Um, so it doesn't, even though it's traditionally called red work, doesn't have to be red you can do it in whatever color you like um, it's just traditionally it was always done in red nowadays we all mix and match and we do all sorts of things um, I know our lovely Linda she did um, she did this quilt so this was um, the Prairie Star um, Redwick quilt she did this one all in greens and navies and it looked fantastic um, Linda Pinch different Linda did our Christmas quilt which is this one here um, which has got red work panels in and she did it all in blues and it was just really nice to see the changes and see the different colours so you can use whatever colour you like it doesn't have to be red okay I will make sure that all these go onto the website today as well so if you want to order them you will be able to okay we also use um, chenille needles for it as well um, so embroidery needles tend to be quite um, narrow quite small um, chenille needles have got a nice big eye because you're using full thickness chenille needles have got a nice big eye on them and um, it just means that it's easier for threading easier for working with um, again I'll make sure that those are on the website for you um, so I wanted to show you some of the pre-printed panels we've got and then I'm going to show you how to make a make an own your own design and then do the stitches okay so we've got these from Moda which are fantastic they are 100% linen, okay? They are pre-printed panels, okay? So they look like sort of old-fashioned embroidery samples. I absolutely love them. They would make amazing, like, placemats or wall hangings. Um, oh, I think I've bought two the same. Yeah, We've got four different designs, so that one's the same. I have. I've managed to bring two the same. Never mind. We have actually got, I'll get all four on the website for you guys. We've got four different designs in these and you literally, so it's basically printed out for you. So you're just going to stitch over the lines. So it's really nice and you haven't got to think too much at all. So you can see there's three designs. They are six pound each, but if you buy all four designs together, you get them for 20 pounds. So you save four pound by buying them all. Um, they are a little bit more expensive, but it's because they are proper linen. Um, but they are beautiful and they look really, really nice when they're stitched up. So we've got those ones. We've also got some of these panels as well, which you could do as a whole panel. You could red work the whole thing and make into like a table runner, or you could cut down and make into placemats. You could cut it slightly bigger and make back in front and make tote bags. You could cut it down and make quilt blocks and then put those quilt blocks in with other things. So there's lots and lots of things you can do with these. These are £4 each, okay? And you can see you're getting full width of fabric by, what width are they? They are, they have, not quite, they're 18 inches wide, okay? You could do this um, as, um, you could put some applique on this as well, as well as red work. You could put a border on the whole thing and make a beautiful table runner entirely up to you but those will be going on the website too so that's my little selling pitch anybody want to see any of that any, uh, again or are you all okay with that everybody all right with that i think so yeah cool okie doke so i'm just going to grab my light box from over here because i had to move everything out of the way <laughs> so that i could do the raffle there we go so what i'm going to do so there are lots of different ways of doing red work okay um, Mandy Shaw from Dandelion Designs, um, she's got an amazing website and she does some really, really beautiful red work patterns and she uses iron-on transfers. So when you buy her pattern, it's an iron-on transfer and you can use that transfer. So um, it's like a sheet of paper and you put it right sides together with your fabric and you iron, iron it on and it transfers the design to the fabric. You can use them sort of maybe three or four times, maybe five before the transfer runs out, okay? Which is fab. If you just want to do a couple of cushions and you don't want to use that design again, no problem at all. There are, there's something called um, um, transferable pencils, which are a red pencil. I've got one here. There we go. It's 
red pencil and you can draw your design out onto like greaseproof paper or onto copy paper and then you would put your paper then wrong way round onto your fabric your right sides together and iron it that works brilliantly if you are very very careful with your ironing um, it's not a method I particularly like we have done it in the shop um, but I've since found this method and this is so much easier um, the hot iron transfer pencils are brilliant as long as, as everything is completely flat completely still and you press really really gently if you smudge or if your paper moves slightly you will get a red line and it doesn't wash out okay it's pretty permanent so you have to then alter the design to cover that red pencil line um, I, mean, I say it's permanent it will wash out but it's going to take two or three washes for it to wash out and it kind of spoils it a little bit for me so since learning this technique this is the way I like so you need a light box okay um, if you haven't got a light box up against a window if you haven't got that you can put your um, phone you know you've got your torches on your phone if you put like a clear plastic box you know we use the oh, where are they give me a second if you grab one of these oh no it's all gonna fall down if I grab that um, you know the storage boxes we use for your blocks and everything those clear plastic boxes if you put the lid face down with the with the torch or the torch on your phone underneath light box it works just as well or you can like I said you can do the old-fashioned up against the window thing um, I'm very lucky I've got a light box they're not overly expensive you can pick them up on the the a word on Amazon for sort of 10 15 pound um, we bought one actually just to see what they were like and it's in the shop it's fantastic works really really well they're not not an expensive item if you're gonna get into red work it's definitely a way to go so I'm going to turn just because it was the first piece of paper I, I clicked uh, I grabbed our little tulip applique from the other day I'm going to turn this into a red work design so I've got that down on my light box so that I can it's shining through and with my white I've got just got some plain white fabric you can use linen if you want to and um, that's absolutely fine linen does give a really nice sort of shabby chic look um, but you can use any fabric any background fabric as long as you can see through it obviously you wouldn't be able to use black particularly because you wouldn't even see the design through that but you can use any plain cottons the the Moda Bella solids we've got on the website they'd be brilliant for this um, yeah so you can use whatever you like interface it always always where possible interface it um, it will help when you're stitching you won't see any of those little stray strands of thread through <laughs> um, it also stabilizes your, your fabric as well so I would absolutely um, interface it okay now I'm going to turn this little design into a red work design I'm going to use a Frixon pen um, obviously remember if you use a Frixon pen don't do half your stitching and then think oh it's a bit crumpled I'll iron it iron it turn that a couple of times <laughs> because then you lose all your design because your fricks on pen will vanish but you could use um one of the wash out pens if you wanted to and then once you'd finished just rinse you know damp sponge in and sponge it off uh don't use a vanishing marker either because i've done that before <laughs> and the vanishing marker i drew out this design and it lasted 24 hours and then i came back to it the following evening and i was like oh damn use the wrong wrong pen so yeah don't use a vanishing marker either use something you're happy to you could use a chalk pencil something like that okay are you all okay girls and guys are you all with me so far how are we how are we doing I think so Jan yeah. says good tips thank you on the light box yeah yeah it's um i i very often the the plastic boxes off those store the lids of the storage box turn your torch on upside down and makeshift light box works really well okay so i'm just going to draw out this design okay so i'm just going to draw that tulip out like this okay and this could be anything at all this could be you know any image that is relatively graphic you know, a line image um kids coloring books they'd be perfect for this you could turn those into red wick designs so all i'm doing is just drawing out that image okay following through because i can see it through the light box like this So red work really does consist of two stitches, three at the most. They're embroidery stitches, 
but they're really nothing nothing complicated anybody can have a go at this it's really easy okay so done my tulip out don't need my light box anymore like that okay so all I've done is just do my tulip out like that of course once I finish stitching and iron it this will all disappear now I'm going to let's go with a pink tulip shall we no actually no because you won't be able to see let's go with a red tulip so you can see um, see the stitching against the lines so with regards to thread don't go too long okay they say really you should go from your fingertip to your elbow no longer than that um, it's so that you don't it doesn't tangle because if you have a really long piece you just end it just ends up knotting up so from your fingertips to the middle of your elbow like that chop that bit off oh my poor nails I painted I had to paint my nails yesterday to go on pajanda I've got hiccups as well which doesn't help um because I dyed my hair and there was a hole in the glove and I've got a bright blue nail and the <laughs> the nail polish isn't really yet <laughs> covering it so I'm going to just thread up a needle like that and you can do a knot in the end okay there's no reason why you can't do knots with this all right so you just want a little knot in the end now where well, when we were doing the needle turn um, tutorial I briefly touched on the fact of thinking about where your lines are going and what is sitting on top of each other so it really helps when you're doing red work if you do that if you think about it so if you have a little look I don't know Drew, if you can just come up onto this tulip because I'm going to point stuff out this petal is on the top of this petal which is on the top of the little buddy bit okay so if I was if I started here and went round here like this and like that I wouldn't carry on down this one okay I would do the bit that's on top as one piece if you've got a really intricate design now this is a really really simple design but if you let me just move move this over a second so you, before I start stitching if you've got something really intricate like this one okay can you see this little fireplace one and you just kind of do a wiggly line and just follow kind of wherever you think it might be going it doesn't give as much definition to the picture as if you did it as a whole. So like this one with the fireplace, I would have stitched all the way round that one as a whole. Okay. And with the fire, oh, I don't know if you can guys can see this because it is quite intricate. Um, let me grab that needle again because it's easier for me to point them out rather than my fingers. So like with the fire, hopefully you can see this. I did that flame to there, but this flame's in front. So I've done that one as a whole, okay? And then these ones are in front of this. So that's been done as a whole. And it helps the thread to kind of um, define the shape and define that 3D-ness, even though it's a 2D image. I'm hoping that made sense, guys. Does, it, do, do you understand what I'm trying to say with that? Hope, please do shout if you, if you, you know, if you do. But have a real, have a look at the image and think, right, okay, that's a whole shape. That one is kind of tucking in behind. So I'm not going to do that and then take some of that whole shape. You'll get a better look. You'll get a more professional finish to your red work. Uh, it's a little thing, but it really does just create um, a more defined image. Hopefully, hopefully that all, all is all good. So I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this whole petal here like this okay so I'm going to start here it doesn't matter where I start because I'm going to go all the way around because this is the top petal so I want that one to be a whole image so while I just get started on this one um, any qu questions uh, before I start Maria asked would you use a uh, sorry would you use DMC thread would you use all six strands no no, absolutely not, lovely. So it's way too thick. Um, you can, like I said, you can use embroidery silks for it, but I would probably only use two or three strands. I wouldn't use all six. Even though you're using all this as a whole strand, it's much, much finer than all six. It would be really, really clunky, all six, okay? So two, three at the maximum if you're gonna split it down. Um, that's why we have the cotton embroidery rather than the DMC because you haven't got to spit it all out. This this works really nicely. Okay. Um, any other questions? 
Uh, no, but Jenny says it makes perfect sense. Good, 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 fab. So I'm going to bring my needle out from the back through to the top like that. And how we start, so it's just a back stitch. It really is. It's This is so simple. You're going to kick yourselves when, when we start doing this, okay? So I'm going to come... One of the other things with red work, it's not about the size of stitching, it's about consistency. So you don't need to do tiny, tiny, tiny little stitches like that. You also don't want big galloping ones, okay? If you do really, really tiny stitches, that's fine, that's up to you. It's gonna take you a lot longer, it's gonna use a lot more thread. But it's about, don't go little tiny one, bigger one, little tiny one, bigger one, bigger one. You know, consistency of stitch, again, gives a more professional finish. So um, I tend to go in about on that far. Hopefully you can see that. So about that far away. Okay. So I'm going to go in like that and pull my thread through. And then I'm going to come in about the same space away onto that line. Come up like that. All right. Pull my thread through. And now you want to go back in that hole there. Okay. Again, that's one of the uh, one of the real things about getting red work to look right is making sure you go back in that hole. Don't miss a couple of threads and go like that because your lines will look really gappy. You will get even if it's one thread, you'll get these little blips of of your background fabric showing. And again, it's just about getting that um, that more defined look. So I'm going to go down that hole and I'm going to come up about the same distance away from there and pull through. So down that hole and come up about the same distance away there. And it's just a back stitch. And if you guys, any of you are embroiderers, if, then you will know this anyway. That really is all that red work is, is back stitch. I'm going to show you French knots as well because a lot of red work patterns use French knots. But backstitch is the easiest thing in the world once you get the hang of it, okay? So I'm just going to work my way around this whole piece. Actually, I'm not probably not going to do the whole piece for you girls, because guys, because it's very, very simple. And I'm not sure you really want to watch me <laughs> do this whole thing. <laughs> so any questions or anything? Just when I'm going to get up to the tip, go up to the tip of the petal. And... Anybody there? What have uh, you been up to? And David said, would you use a hop or not? A hop? Could you use an embroidery hop? Oh, yes, hoop. Uh, hoop, sorry, one moment. Yeah, <laughs> embroidery hoop. Yes, absolutely. Lots and lots of people like to use an embroidery hoop. Um, I don't. I don't get on with them particularly. It's like I, I hand quilt without a quilting hoop. Um, I find it quite difficult with my hands to, to hold it. But yes, if you want to use an embroidery hoop, Go for it, go for it. Um, I find it easier because I can manipulate the fabric a little bit more. I haven't got to go in and back up and in and back up. Um, but yes, use an embroidery hoop, no problem at all. It's just not my cup of tea, embroidery hoops. <laughs> so I'm just, that's it, that's all it is. Oh, you're right there. Yes, okay, obviously. it's just a little straight line like that. So I'm going back in where I came out of and then about the same distance away like that and it is very meditative which you know I can't say that word <laughs> and really relaxing because you don't really have to think about anything you're just following the design you've drawn out or that is printed on the panel okay so we're going to do all the way to the tip like that and I'm just going to show you how I would change direction okay so with that one I would just rather than coming back up I'd just go back in the hole like that and then I would just, rather than trying to bend the needle and bend the fabric, instead of doing it in one movement, just come up like that. Okay. And then I can carry on with that same movement. So down, come back and back up like that. Okay. And that is it. That is all there is to it. It is super, super simple. It's more about what design are you going to do? Okay. So that's it and I would follow this shape all the way round to here okay and then I would go from here like round to there because it just feels more like the lines feel more like they're sat underneath each other then and then I would do that one 
and then the rest of my design, whatever your design is. Okay, so I'm going to show you French knots as well. Um, I've got enough cotton on there still. I've got enough still cotton on there because French knots are used a lot in in bread work. So um, I'm going to I've, this. This here, instead of a line, we're going to pretend it's a French knot, okay? So I've come up like this, nice and tight. I t I'm right-handed, so I tend to hold my thread in my left hand. There are lots of ways of doing this, but this is just how I do it, okay? Make sure you've got enough. I'm going to wrap. Now, depending on how many times you wrap, depends on how, many, how bulky your French knot is. Again, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what you what look you like. You can go twice, you can go three, four, five, you can go as many times as you want. I tend to find three or four works quite well. So I've got I've wrapped it, so I've gone in, two, three, like that. And I've got this quite can you see I've got this quite tight. Okay. And you want to keep it quite tight. This is really hard to do towards the camera. Okay. And I'm gonna keep it quite tight. I tend to put my thumb over it and then pull through with my other hand. Okay, keep that right down and move my thumbs just so you can see it. Okay, but I keep my thumb over it until I've pulled that thread all the way through because that keeps that knot nice and flat against the fabric. And then you're going to go back down just literally like a thread away from where you came up. So I've got a little French knot. Okay, so I'll do that again for you girls and guys. So I'm going to come up where, wherever the design says you want a little French knot, like that. Hold it with my left hand, obviously opposite way if you're left-hander. One, two, three, like that. And then I tend to put my finger, my thumb, sorry, right over the needle, because I'm, I'm kind of squeezing it tight to keep that thread in. You're right, Drew? Yeah. Okay. Hands are awkward. All right. <laughs> and then pull that through, keeping that knot nice and low like that okay oh I slipped damn it see that one hasn't worked but I'm going to take that back in like that there we go it's not too bad it wasn't quite against the thing but it's not too bad it's very difficult doing this at an odd angle because normally I would have it towards me okay so I'll do it once more for you girls guys there we go everybody getting this okay is everybody all right one two three Remember he said I was supposed to be going shopping, but I'd rather stay and watch this. <laughs> Anybody other comments? So pull that through um, like that, keeping that nice and flat. And then... Karen and Daly said, uh, busy having my lunch, watching you. I, then I'm going to finish off uh, your stacking basket. Oh, handles. cool. Fab. Okay, so that's French knots. Okay, so if you if I did more than three wraps, you'd get a slightly more bulbous one. You know, you can do skinnier ones, fatter ones, entirely up to you. So uh, lovely. Do you remember? Uh, sorry, just replying to Carolyn's comment. Send us a picture when they're done. Pop a picture on Facebook so I can see them. I do like seeing all your stuff. So that's red work. It's really simple. <laughs> okay, it's a really really lovely gentle way of working. Um, it's you can use it within your quilting as well so you could do a pieced block and then or do some like we've done here so you could do your red work and use it as a block within your quilt like this one here so we've done some blocks which just had a plique on some which had red work you know you can mix and match it you could um, use it as a decorative thing so on your blocks as well you know so um what did we do it on i'm trying to think what we did it on the pie crust cushions so um, after we'd done the reverse applique and everything, we then did some lines of red work um, design on top of it um, to embellish it. You know, so you could use it for all sorts of things. Um, this pattern here, this is the Prairie, Prairie Points quilt. Um, we do run this as a class. I think there's one, one left to do, actually. Um, but I, the red work hearts, I will pop on the website. You could be able to buy the hearts just by themselves. So if you wanted to make a cushion or something, you'll be able to do that. Okay. Um, any questions? Any comments? Yeah, Jackie Island said, check your kid's toy box for a light box. Just borrowed one off my granddaughter. There you go. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, you can you can find some light boxes all over. But like, if it comes to it, up against the window, sunny day, it's beautiful. Up against the window, light streaming through, and you can draw around that way. Uh, Jenny says she's catching up with the blocks of the week. Cool. Fab. That's about it. So lovely. 
nice little gentle one nice little quick one today girls and guys um we are back tomorrow with our little fabric auction thing okay our sale fabric sale um yeah we've got <laughs> got a lot of work to do this afternoon because we've got all the hachander orders to sort and then we've got to get ready for that as well so yeah, lots and lots going on um but we'll be back at one o'clock um and we'll go through it all then but we got loads of kits and there's some jelly rolls there's some charm packs there's all sorts there and um, there's some bolt ends um there's all sorts of bits and pieces um so we're having a real big big clearance thing um at silly silly prices so we will be back tomorrow with that if you've got no other questions i'm going to go and start packing more orders <laughs> um anybody else got anything else there they'd like to say today no it was the same thanks cool fabulous lovely thanks then guys um thanks for a nice quick one today and we will see you tomorrow see you tomorrow for the sale bye